All right, so welcome back to HCF01. So we have all ingredients now to prepare Feynman rules for QED. So that's the toolkit we need in order to make calculations, to calculate scattering processes and decays. And we have already seen Feynman rules for our toy theory. Again, now the situation is a little bit more complicated because we can consider the spin of particles in addition to their energy and momenta. Um, the rules sequence of things are very much the same. There is, however, a few caveats to keep in mind and I'll point those out. Okay, so the very first thing is to be very clear in uh, our notation. So this is an arbitrary <coughs> or generic QED Feynman diagram. We are only pointed out the incoming and the outgoing lines. So there is internal lines, which I didn't mention here. Important to note the momentum, momentum and the directions. And the directions are arbitrary. We just have to be clear on them and then treat them consistently. Right, so this is not different in our previous discussion. Then here comes the difference. Um, our external lines are either electron, positrons, or photons. Right, you can fermions and photons, charged fermions and photons. So we discussed how those solutions look like our um, spinors U uh, and V, and our, for outgoing for outgoing uh, electrons for outgoing particles we have this. The junct vector here, which is given by u dagger gamma zero. And similarly for the incoming antiparticle, uh, v dagger gamma zero. For the photon, we have the polarization vectors uh, for incoming and outgoing photons. All right, then we have a vertex vector. Here now, g zero or g e is a, a constant um, and, and, and a dimensionless property. But we do have to ha have a, a gamma, gamma mu here um, as part of our vertex factor. For the propagator, our internal lines, we have a difference between electrons, positrons, and photons, and that comes from the fact that electrons and positrons are massive particles. So we have vertex vectors um, which you know, have you know, this 1 over q square behavior or 1 over q square minus m square behavior. So here you can already see that there's going to be a complication later when we evaluate or integrate our momentum. Simply uh, the same discussion I had before and we already know how to solve this problem uh, of infinities by renormalizing, by having a cutoff and renormalizing. Excellent. So the next step then is very much the same. Uh, there's no change. We have to make sure that there's energy and momentum conservation and we enforce this introducing delta functions. Uh, we have to integrate over each and every internal momenta and each and inter and each internal line uh, gets one of those integration factors. And then after we integrate, we have to we, we are left with the delta function and we have to cancel that delta function. All right. In our toy experiment, the order of things didn't matter. Everything we had in there was scalars numbers, right? Here, we do have uh, a little bit more complicated problem. So the, there's an importance in the order of which we execute things. So what we want to do is you know, form fermion lines. We just follow a fermion as we go from the left to the right. And we will find things which are always of the form an adjoint spinor, a four, cross, four times four matrix, and a spinor. And the result of this is going to be a number. All right, great. There is one additional complication, is accounting for duplications and making sure that the sign is open. And I'm just mentioning this here. This will become more clear as we walk through examples. So there is an anti-symmetration going on where we have to introduce a minus sign between the diagrams, between different di diagrams that differ only by the interchange or the exchange of two incoming or two outgoing electrons or positrons and or the incoming electron with an outgoing positron. So if you have a diagram which is exactly the same, but you know the two incoming electrons are interchanged, you have to add those two diagrams, you know, you have to add all matrix elements together before we calculate an amplitude. But you have to introduce a minus sign when you change um, those two particles. So with that, we, have, we can now just 
basically calculate whatever QED process we want. All the tools are already here. And what we want to do now next in the next video, and also in the, in the um, recitation and homework, is to go through a few examples to get a little practice with this. There's a number of tricks um, which will become handy and I'll explain those in a separate video. Uh, they're just mathematical tricks which allow us to quickly evaluate um, the um, uh, multiplication of spinors and matrix elements and so on. All right, that's it for this video. Um, again, there is going to be a, another two or three videos which deal with actually evaluating or calculating matrix elements.